Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. When it comes to getting data, especially about precipitation out of South America, I tend to rely on two sources. The first is the CPC. Now, the reason why we have to look at these two separate sources is because unlike maybe what we have in the United States, which is multiple mesonets, a very dense network of weather stations, and then our 160 separate radars that kind of give us this ubiquitous coverage of precipitation. In South America, um, some of the data are just a bit more sparse. It makes it a bit more challenging here. So I'm going to show you what I've got here, and we're also going to do some model evaluation at the beginning of this. So that CPC data for December 14th to the 20th is over here on the right. And this was the forecast for the same time period. So what I'm trying to gauge here is how well the European model is doing. Now we see that there were drier conditions into this area that were pretty well forecast by the European model. Now that's in a precipitation anomaly map on the left saying that, you know, from that time period, the 14th to the 20th, some places right here in Brazil, central and northern growing areas, we're expecting to see a two to four inch deficit in precipitation. It was forecast to be wet in Paraguay and southern Brazil's growing areas right in through here. And we can see that the CPC gauge data did pick up on some of that. Across parts of South America, you do see a few things that, that did materialize, like the rains right in through here in southern Buenos Aires province. Uh, but I, I look at this overall and I see that the European model is likely doing a pretty good job of picking up on this pattern. Now here's the second source. So there is a program from NASA called GPM, Global Precipitation Measurement Mission, and it uses a network of satellites to kind of produce precipitation estimates. And so this over here on the right is now a total accumulated precipitation map, so it's not an anomaly, but I want to compare it to what we had over here on the left from the European anomalies. And you can see that the precipitation was relatively sparse in through parts of Brazil's central and northern growing areas, which with much wetter conditions in southern Mato Grosso do Sul, Parana, and Paraguay. Uh, getting into Argentina, uh, we, we did see the forecast for some weather conditions in here did show up pretty well on this satellite, as did the weather conditions to the south. So again, my model evaluation here is just to see how well I think that the European model has been doing. But remember, this was December 14th to the 20th. During that same time period when things were dry, we did accumulate about a week's worth of heat stress days. And the way to think about this is that with the clear skies, the temperatures getting there well above 32 degrees Celsius or over 91 degrees Fahrenheit. And it was quite hot during that time period. And this would have marked the fourth drier time period in Brazil's central and northern growing areas that we've seen so far for the start of their growing season. Now, how about we do the same thing, uh, but look at last week. So over here on the left, I'm now going to show you, because I saved this map off from last week. This is the total accumulated precipitation forecast between December 21st and 27th. And over here on the right is the satellite-derived estimates of this. So again, we see that the satellite measurements were doing a, a fairly good job of this. And why I'm not showing you the CPC is because the newest data is still two days old. And so I want to keep it with the latest, and the latest is the satellite information. So much better rainfall forecast and materialized in here. And look at this. Remember the drier conditions forecast for Brazil's far southern growing areas and uh, Argentina? We, we did see that uh, fairly, fairly well. And some of the precipitation that is measured here, remember, this. some of this is just infrared satellite temperature. So some of the cold cloud tops, which may not have produced much precipitation, still gave us a precipitation signal. But these amounts are very light, uh, to say the least. So I guess my conclusion here is that overall, I think the European model of all of our modeling suites is doing the best with this. And this is a good example of what I'm talking about. Now, did we accumulate any heat stress in the last week? I, I don't think we did quite as much as we did during the 14th to the 20th. We did see above average temperatures in Mato Grosso do Sol over toward Bahia. You know, some places in here sitting between 2 and 6 degrees Fahrenheit above average. And also southern growing areas in Argentina right in through here, still a bit warmer than normal. Where the heavier rains were, it was uh, on the cooler side of things. Okay. As we now move forward in the forecast, let's also look at model transition. Over here on the left, this would have been the old week two forecast where we're looking at total accumulated precipitation basically between now and January 4th. This is the new week one forecast, which is valid over the same time period. So this today through January 4th. And one of the things that I noticed here is that the broader area of wetter conditions that was forecast by the ensemble is now a bit more focused in Mato Grosso do Sol, uh, you know, in, in through this area. 
and we still see the drier conditions here at Tocantins Bahia moving over toward uh, Mato Grosso where we may be another inch inch and a half plus in deficit this week but an interesting transition in the model has been down here in Argentina initially forecasting drier conditions south of Santa Fe and east of Cordoba it's now a bit broader and a bit farther to the north so you can see where that drier area uh, is still about the same precipitation forecast for Buenos Aires though from there, let's go take a look at the weather forecast in the exact high and low pressure systems moving through. And I want to focus on one. Now, the monsoon is going to give you flashes of green every day here in this area. But so we're going to focus more on southern Brazil and Argentina. Now, what I'll be watching midweek this week, so this is now getting into Wednesday afternoon and evening, is there's a very strong load that's going to come right here off of the southeast coast, basically of like Buenos Aires. And you can see the front that's associated with it right in through here. Now, that front's going to be a quick hitter. Let me go back here to show you. Here's Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon, and evening. It very quickly moves from south to north across, you know, uh, um, Argentina's primary growing regions right in through here. So it's going to give you a quick hit of rain, but more than likely going to be some thunderstorm activity out of this. Now, this is going to produce some strong offshore winds. I'll show you those in a few moments. But after that, we see that Argentina working away through Thursday. Now getting into Friday, going into the weekend, high pressure dominates for the next several days. And I hope you've been keeping your eyes right here because I see that after this midweek storm system this week, going all the way into midweek next week, we're not really seeing the models picking up on much rainfall in through here. I, that's another week I just added on to this. So as that first storm system comes through, something to note here, offshore winds right here, just off of the east coast of Buenos Aires, we are going to be seeing uh, significant wave height in the 12 to 18 foot range. And so some very choppy seas right in through this area, just thinking about some of the vessels that are sitting there. From that point forward, I want to show you the bigger picture things. With our La Nina likely reaching its peak, we see some strong trade winds right here for the next uh, several days, the next 15 days. Meeting them are westerly winds on this side. So we're going to have good rising motion over here in phase maybe three and four of the MJO. But if we take a look at what it looks like with that persistence, uh, with the persistence of those trade winds, you know, you don't see the diagonal nature, nature in the velocity potential, means, meaning that the MJO is not moving. Uh, so our best rising motion is here and our sinking motion is over the central Pacific. Now, what do we get over, you know, South America? Well, you can see it. There's our rising motion, sinking motion, and we could help to enhance the monsoon getting out into week two. So let's now look at the old week two forecast um, over here on the right hand side through January 11th. You do see that it was wetter across actually all of Brazil's main growing areas. Well, now here's the new week two. The wettest conditions are favored farther to the north, which is where the MJO would have suggested it. We do see wetter than average coming through here over toward Paraguay. But uh, the model did dry out in Brazil's northern growing areas here and also in Argentina. So that's an important model trend as we now look out into week two that I want you to see when comparing that to the old week three forecast. So what does the new week three forecast look like? Well, we'll use two different models to get an idea on this. Over here on the right is the ECMWF and over here is the GFS. Both models are trying to paint just this corridor in through here as being wetter than normal. And the GFS is really aggressive on the drying in Brazil's northern growing areas. In Argentina, the European is drier than the GFS, as you can see here. And overall, like I started off this video, I've been favoring the European's solution given its performance as of late. It at least seems to be the best performing global model. Well, from there, we're just going to finish out with one last look here, because in our next video that will be coming out next uh, next week. So I'm talking about next uh, Monday morning's video. Um, we should be getting in. Let's see. That'll be the fourth. We'll be getting in on the fifth. So I'm sorry. On the fifth of next uh, month, we'll get brand new long range updates from the European. And I want to remind you what it said so far for January. Wet in through here, drier in Brazil's northern and eastern growing areas and drier than normal in Argentina. So we'll get a new update of this. And I'll be sure to share it with you. Okay. Have a great rest of your week. and We'll talk to you again on Thursday. Thanks.